starts this crucial full full tie. The ball squirts out, excellent chance for Bath. Barkley and Banahan was just hovering there, and if that ball had managed to shift across to Banahan, could have been a score right from the off. Butch James with his first pass, and this is Cuthbert getting into the game, of course, keeping Abandonen out of the starting 15 at the moment. This is Mears, lovely pass from Mears! Oh, brilliant! Lovely pass from Lee Mears to put Carraro in the corner, and what a start from Bath! They get the free kick and they go. Humphreys to Paddy Wallace. This is looking much better. Five metres out now. Vandenberg. It's piled backwards. Good defence from Bath. The two spring box there. Making headway, Buta then taking it up. Humphreys, little short pass, oh lovely, nice into Leakey. <laughs> Cutely worked try, taken by Adam Darcy. Well, Ulster, they did the hard work in the middle, and Robbie Diak, we thought that Ulster might be weakened without the rampaging presence of Stephen Ferris. But where do you just see the line that Robbie Diak comes on here? Well, they got the ball out first of all into Trimble's hands, hitting the wide channels, managed to recycle it. They'd won the penalty, so they knew that Humphreys was going to have an option. But look at the hands here. Beautiful. Diak hits a lovely line and great supporting from Adam Darcy. Diak is highly rated in the Ulster setup, isn't he? Ferris might get the headlines, but. Well, they're different types of players. Ferris is the barnstorming ball carrier, Diak much more subtle, good good ball handler and offloads extremely well. So a very kickable conversion to bring the score within a point. Ulster managed to bring it then Back to 8-7. Nearly works again for Bath. Humphreys, ooh, he took his time there. Butch James said, welcome back, Sunshine. Not a glance back from Butch James. Humphreys still on the floor. Well, Humphreys was fortunate that he managed to get the ball away. They were all over him. Took his time again, didn't he? That's just a, that's a Butch James. I'm glad to be back. Welcome to the wreck. <laughs> And Humphreys, I think, I think he's going to be quicker the next time he gets the ball, yeah. getting it away. He won't take prize. Humphreys limping after that restart. He does not look happy at all. Yeah, he fly half for Ulster. Now, Ian Humphreys looks incredibly uncomfortable as he walks towards this ball. Humphreys does the business and continues to limp back. James chipping. Spence shouting loudly, my ball, and does the business too, doesn't he? Pinar, brilliant break from Pinar. Humphreys on the inside, lovely passing too, and great tackling back there because Trimble was flying. And there you see. You see the, the strength of Trimble there because he found himself, I said, but able to pump the legs, able to hold on to the ball. Again, middle of the pitch, really a kick to nothing from Butch James. And one of the rare mistakes I think he's made in terms of his decisions. And Pinar was looking around here. We saw two lovely offloads. First of all, the Humphreys, and then the Trimble. Look, two guys on him. And he just manages to work hard enough just to win himself at half a second to be able to recycle the ball. And when Spence went up to catch that ball, he was in the air, Harpe couldn't get hold of him and had to let him go. He didn't want to give away a penalty. 
Well, just before half time last week, Ulster got points on the board, went in 15 13 down, and it almost felt as if it was almost like an, a 0 0 scoreline at half time. And Ulster had their tails up, even though they were down by two points. Very important for Ian Humphreys to get three points here. So at the last minute of the game, and a chance for the Ireland A player Humphreys to nip into this 14-10 lead. Very nicely struck. One point the difference. It's just two players at the beginning. This player arrive, okay, and it's yellow card for this player, okay. It's coming, okay. Butch James, yellow card. Ten minutes on the sideline now. Arrived. Will okay. this be the pivotal moment which gives Ulster the chance to take control of this match? Well, this is a mirror image because last week when David Flatman was yellow carded, Ulster made a count. They got a score right in that ten minute. Sin bin time, and again the scuffle's broken out. And Butch James is in there. But I'm not sure entirely what he's doing wrong there. The touch touch clearly. The scuffle is between the two players. Third player's coming in to join in. He's getting penalised, but you know, there aren't really too many penalties or punches being thrown there. What the ground staff have had to do. But the early engagement gives Ulster maybe the chance with a man advantage to strike. This is Spence. All flooding that narrow side. Vandenberg. Well, what Ulster need now is a bit of tempo, but the bath defence on Vandenberg, oh, exceptional there. The big ball carrying forwards haven't quite managed to breach the bath defensive line like they did last week. Wallace. Harvey goes up quickly and he does get hold of his man and that man is Spence. BJ Bota. Tackle made by Hooper. Remember no Ferris, he was it in training this week. Also one point behind. Trimble can't quite get outside his man. Up to the 22 now through Darcy. Okay. Bath so tenacious, hunting down Humphreys and excellent defence. Spence has come wide on this right hand side for a possible cross field kick, but still it's the short side for Ulster so far. No scrum half. Who wants it? And Pino's popped up. Falloon. Just a little bit of gas going into contact there. Bath trying to get the ball. Oh, Harvey went up there to try and make the tackle and just about snagged his man because there are a couple outside. Brady. Into the 22. Through 11 phases. Lunenberg. And once this whistle blows, Butch James is back on the pitch. So they'll be keen to get across the game or get some former points. Inside to Spence. One point the difference. Lunenberg. Heavy duty running from him. Humphreys. Daniele. Getting ever closer now, Ulster. Trimble. He's got fantastic feet, doesn't he, Trimble? Caught, thumping his way into contact. Looking for the try. Have they got numbers straightened from Daniele? Still Ulster have got numbers on that far side. The ball goes there. Is there a try in the corner? There is. Spence there. Patience has been rewarded and Ulster have the lead.
extraordinary stuff it's the commitment to keeping the ball alive they managed to get across the game line all the fours doing their jobs and Ian Humphreys pulling the strings once or twice you thought is the chink of light coming but they just used the full width of the pitch and Nevin Spence just squeezed in at the corner what a difference is that going to make to this game the 20th phase of play they just they just created too much space out wide all of a sudden you've got a half yard outside Barkley and Spence well that's fully committed there an unintended celebration but hey four points just hoping hoping that they could hold out until puts James is back on and it was terrific play from both sides you just thought Bath they're going to run down that clock for the 10 minutes and also they never gave up but out of it it is most definitely advantage Ulster Tui and Dyak being replaced by Barker and Henry for Ulster crucial kick as well because it takes Ulster to position where Bath have to get a converted try to take the lead again it is a beautiful conversion too that's a stunning kick from Darcy oh found some space as well nice take what an intriguing last yeah, quarter or so is. we've got in front of us big decision here Ian Humphreys kicked one from just inside his half at Ravenhill last week he's four from four not a great surprise he's gonna back himself and he's recovered very well from that little ankle knock that he got early in the first half so six points up and looking to take it beyond a converted try yeah, Bath bringing a bend and on. They're going to be forced to chase the game ever so slightly. That's high pressure, high risk stuff. And Ulster, you know, they'll thrive in terms of defence because it's now a case of Bath. They have to bring the game to Ulster. Just hit a beautiful conversion from the touchline. Now from inside his own half. So, so close. So, so important. 23-14 in terms of distance. Good counter drive initially from Elsa, but the Bath forwards are ready for that. Smears that has his hands on the ball, another penalty going Bath's way. Oh, Fernandez Lobe in there. Still some fire in his belly, age 36. Well, a few tasty chops coming in from Fernandez Lobe there. And he might be a little bit concerned, he doesn't want it reversed. Momentum is all with Bath. And it might be a yellow, is it? The referee, you feel, getting a little bit frustrated. For me, it's cynical and deliberate, deliberate infringement. It's cynical, you don't release. It's cynical and deliberate infringement. So, Spence goes to the sin bin now. What are Bath going to do? Take advantage of the one man that they have on the pitch over and above Elsa, or just knock over the three? So, it makes sense to bring him within seven just to start with, and then they can really go at Elsa. 15 men on 14. They got to score twice to win, so the three points makes perfect sense. You saw the utter disbelief on Nevin Spence's face there, but equally, Butch James is yellow. First glance, there wasn't a great deal in it. It's just a simple case of Bath. They've got to do what Ulster managed to do in the same 10 minute period. Ulster leaking a few penalties. There's up to seven now. 
in the second half. I, th I think the reason Evan Spence is, is in total disbelief, I think he's got the wrong guy there. I think it's actually Willie Falloon, the open side flanker, who's not releasing the player on the ground. It's Sterling who's had an impression since he's come on. James looking wide, nicely looped past Mears, shipping it on. Taylor, Banahan's just waiting now. Banahan bursting his way over the line. Quite brilliant from deep inside their own 22. That is a cracker from Barb. And the conversion would take them into the lead. I have to say, well, I have rarely witnessed a stadium erupt like it. <laughs> Ambitious stuff, abandoning, massive handoff here. This tackle's got to be made. He just palms off Paddy Wallace. He keeps going, and they recycle the ball so quickly. Guys are shooting up out of the line. Look at that. Wallace has got to go low, side them down. Instead, abandoning gets free reign. BJ Boda comes up there. Yep, floats over him. And here, good hands from Lee Mears. And Banahan from this distance, not a chance, Ulster. He just bounces Adam Darcy. Darcy went at him hard, though, didn't he? Yeah, but he is a lump. He is a And look what it means to him. This crowd went absolutely berserk. Bill with the lead. Oh, Humphreys will fancy it, he's hit one inside from inside his own half in this 40 minutes, so he'll take his time, it's bang in front. I was going to say, in these last seven, eight minutes, you need your experienced heads to show their composure. Lewis Moody giving away the penalty there, not releasing the player. And all of a sudden, if Humphreys gets this bath of Scott to score another try, it's, it's crucial in the flow of the game. It just means 22 to 22 again. They've got to keep the ball alive. Perfection so far from Humphreys. And they have not been easy. From his own half, from the touchline. Now, from in front with a lot at stake. He makes it look so easy. Pinar, very cute from him, chips it behind Banahan. It bounces beautifully for the Springbok. Can he finish? Sensational from Pinar. Just dragged down short. Brilliant from Ulster. Desperate from Bath, trying to hold the visitors out. With 14 men, Ulster with a fantastic break thanks to their scrum arm. They'll be happy to camp in the 22 now for a good five minutes. This is the area which they dream of playing their rugby. With the four-point advantage, one out. It's going to be the forwards again that go. Only a couple of men out at the moment for Ulster. It's simple rugby, phase after phase, not looking to crab their way back to underneath the post for a possible drop goal at the moment because there might be a try coming. It's that close. It's crucial for Bath. It'll be their Heineken Cup dream out if they concede the try here, surely. Just pounding at this line, eating up time. Ulster will just want to keep calm and compose. Ulster four points up, trying to take it beyond seven. 
So frustrating for Bath, there's nothing they can do except to wait for the next drive. <laughs> Just over three minutes left and Ulster are keeping it so and tight. Ulster have only got three wide men and the rest of the pitch. Humphreys is behind all the melee. This ball is not going anywhere. Ulster won here last season. And again, they're looking very good to close out this game. It's smart tactical rugby. It's simple. The clock is on their side. The scoreboard's on their side. Less than three minutes left to play. The bar falls just wait, aching to try and get their hands on that ball. Well, Ulster will be in no, no rush to spread this ball. They just keep it tucked up the jerseys, forcing Bath to tackle and tackle again. Humphreys talking to Pienaar. Will he go deep? Maybe go for the drop goal. No. The ball squirts out, and Bath, whose defence has been really good, a couple of metres out. They get the penalty, but they're going to have to go quickly. Packed the game line, and crucially, he's taken his opportunities for points. My Heineken, man of the match, is Ian Humphreys. He's been quite brilliant, hasn't he? And kick those difficult and crucial kicks at the uprights that's enabled Ulster to get this 26-22 lead. Butch James, he's left his fingerprints on this game as well, hasn't he? But what a win if Ulster can indeed close this out. Less than a minute left to play. Well, when you have a match in which there's only four points difference, you look at the kicker comparison there, that has made the difference. Both sides have been fully committed to open rugby. And crucially, that, that try, I think, in the last seconds of the Butch James sin bin. But Ollie Barkley, well, they haven't been easy, but he'd be disappointed not to have a better return with the boot. And crucially, that last conversion that he missed would have taken Bath one point in the lead, and all of a sudden it changes the mental side, it changes the momentum of the game. Crutch! Crutch! That's... Ball! Engage! Alsa just got to run this clock down. It's going to be the forwards that'll have their paws on it. Until a half-back maybe gets to kick the ball off. Less than ten seconds. Maybe one or two more phases. Well, Falser can close this out. This is a better victory than last week. They've had a battle that much harder for this one. And they'll be absolutely delighted. Ulster then deliver a fabulous win. It puts them in a very good position to get out of the pool stages for the first time since 1999. The next game in January at home to Beer.